We have a, a combo story for you. We have a YouTube combo story. What the heck is going on with YouTube? There are two very scary things that are happening with YouTube, and I'm a lawyer, and I'm going to tell you that there is pretty much nothing legally that you can do about it aside from diversifying your choice of entertainment platforms. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. I'm talking about these things. I'm talking about YouTube disabling Google accounts, like whole Google accounts, not just YouTube accounts, which is bad enough. That's bad enough. That's channels. That's people's watch history. That's their their everything on YouTube, including probably their, their YouTube premium. It's the whole Google account, though. That's Google email. That's Google other Google services. That's Google Drive and everything. And that's it's because they spammed emojis on stream. Um, here, Markiplier is very upset. But YouTube has a huge problem when's, right When's now. the last time you saw... Google's accounts are being suspended with... Markiplier speaking so seriously, right? So he goes on here. We're not going to watch his video. Go watch his video yourself. But he, I think, is going to give you an example somewhere here of what was spammed. He had people voting by, by spamming emoticons like this. And that apparently led to accounts being completely disabled. Your Google account is disabled, completely, completely disabled. So of course, Thunder God is going to start spamming emojis. Well, fortunately, we're on Twitch right now for this broadcast. But basically, don't don't spam emojis. Now, isn't that a thing? Like if you're if you're a member of a channel, don't you get like extra emojis, like special ones so you can spam them? Like, come on, this is so weird. But what can you do about it? You really can't do anything about I'm a lawyer and I've looked through the YouTube terms of service and the YouTube terms of service basically say we can do whatever we want uh we you know you're here at at our pleasure and we can determinate your channel for any reason at any time well I wouldn't just stop there this isn't going to be a 2 minute video um definitely go and and watch um the Markiplier video. He's, Markiplier has 25 million subscribers, and this happens to him. Imagine, we're, we're, two, we're two plus orders of magnitude smaller than him. And then there's this other thing. Reclaim the Net notices that YouTube's new terms of service say that they can delete you if you're not commercially viable. And who gets to be the judge of that but YouTube? So I, I don't know if I found the right YouTube of terms of service because this is the one for Switzerland and the European Union. But if you look through here quick, you will see the language that we're talking about. Here, we'll, use, we'll, we'll put viable in. Termination by YouTube for service changes. YouTube may terminate your access or your Google account's access to all or part of the service if YouTube reasonably believes that its provision of the service to you is no longer commercially viable. What does that even mean? Could we get some clarity? Is if, if lawful masses stops making money for YouTube, does that mean that they can just go ahead and terminate Mark? I already know that they can terminate my account for any reason. Why do I need another provision in here? Why, what is this for? Could someone please tell me what this is for? Because I'm the lawyer and wondering, you already have- So quick question, is this for creators or is this just general? So if I don't watch enough advertisers on YouTube, they're gonna shut me down because I don't make them enough money by watching advertisements or? This is the thing that describes your relationship with YouTube. Who may use the service, the content, terminations yeah i'm really trying to figure out what this means uploading content you grant license rights and removing your content copyright protection terminating this agreement deleting the service and this is under a section called terminations by youtube for service changes so it's it's i think it's like it's i think it's trying to get around some kind of like employment law or hiring and firing law or something not not commercially viable sounds like if we lose a contract or, or something right 
Doesn't this, this sounds like, so it, it sounds like something like an employment law, like we reserve the right to lay you off, but YouTube creators are not employees. So is that what this is saying? Is that some kind of like waiver or statement that's trying to get around any state or country's law that says that you you have some kind of employees rights and we can't lay you off without providing some kind of unemployment benefit or coverage or wage or protection or something? People in the comments have a couple different theories. One is that it is targeting people who just watch videos. And so it would be, you know, okay. people that use ad blockers. And so they're using the service quite a bit, but not watching the ads, which is what generates revenue for YouTube. And then another theory would be that it's more for um that they can shut down failing services rather yeah. than accounts it could be failing services it could be someone notices that this has been in the terms of service for the last 10 years and in fact i can i can agree that it's 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 at least on this one it says july 22nd this is not a brand new edition i wonder how we would find old copies of the youtube terms but uh this does seem to be maybe not something to worry about if especially if it's been there for a while but it seems to be focused on service changes so i'm wondering if here we go where youtube is terminating your access for service changes you will be provided with sufficient time to export your content so it is it's talking about shutting down a service so if you have content on a service and they're and they're making a they're terminating their your service because the service is no longer economically viable then you get a chance to export your data i think that's what they're talking about and i don't think reclaim the nets uh uh doomsaying is really that gloomy what do you think but i was concerned there for a moment I, they got me for a moment they really did joe was wondering if it had anything to do with the linkedin lawsuit that's been um going around and trying to circumvent automated use so perhaps if it's saying, you know, bots are not commercially viable in some way or another, then they can shut those down. I will I definitely want to take a look at the LinkedIn lawsuit. I haven't looked at it yet. 100%. Let's look at that. LinkedIn sent a cease and desist letter to HiQ Labs, the startup that collects data from public profiles. They demanded they immediately cease scraping data. In response, HiQ sued LinkedIn, asking the court to prohibit LinkedIn from blocking its access to public profiles. The court served a preliminary injunction against LinkedIn, which was forced to allow HiQ to continue to collect public data. Does do these people forget what an HTTP request is? Like, I can literally go open a Telnet session and ask a server for something. If it provides information in response to my request, how is that any kind of illegally scraping information? I've literally knocked on the door, I mean literally, in the electronic sense, knocked on the electronic door, said hello, H-E-L-O, is one of the commands, HTTP request command, and asked for uh, a page. And then they give me the page. If they didn't want me to have the page, why would they give me the page in response to my request? I know that some websites have terms of service that say or that basically regulates what purposes you can access the information for. Yeah. And so then if you're just scraping, like doing a mat major data scrape of everything, yeah. then that can present unreasonable burden on okay. the website and it can interfere with its ability to serve other users. Did that bot agree to those terms of service? Did, did that bot have a meeting of the minds? I'm just saying, was there a contract formed? Is there really a terms of service violation if a bot has never agreed to a terms of service? What if, you know, so the, so the strongest argument is probably something along the lines of the bot's author had to go to the LinkedIn website and use the LinkedIn website and, 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 and agree tacitly to the terms of service by using the website. Because of course it says there, you know, using this website is subject to our terms of use. And that's been upheld before as a valid agreement. So, but, but yeah, uh, we'll find out in the HiQ lawsuit then what the standards are for this kind of data scraping and whether it really can be prevented by contract or by law or, or, or something. So yeah, what do you think of that? You, you, YouTube can delete you if you are not commercially viable, 
but it really probably means they can delete your access to a particular service if that service becomes not commercially viable and Google wants to shut it down. You get a chance to export your data. I think that actually sounds really generous for them providing some of these services for free or even really low cost, a few bucks a month for a, uh, a commercial Gmail account or a $10 a month fee for YouTube premium and music. Uh, I mean, these are definitely high fees compared to the developing world, but these are not high fees in the US. So thank you for joining me. That is our show. You are watching Lawful Masses with me, Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This channel would not be possible without your support. We use patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.com slash law for our community building and support gathering. This month, the November month of giving, Sponsus.com is running a promotion where creators will only be charged a 3% fee instead of the standard 7% fee. So if you are interested in getting started on Sponsus, now is the time to go ahead and do that. Visit Sponsus.com for more information. I am just a creator on the platform. I am not financially interested or invested in Sponsus.com myself. Full disclosure. Thank you to our $50 plus supporters on both platforms, Joe Tyson, Aspernari, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Snore W, Black Leaf, Benjamin Hightoff, and Steven. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters scrolling on the LED panel behind me, and all of you will be on the crawls at the end of the videos that drop. Happy fall, everybody. I will be working on some things for you this week, and I look forward to dropping the podcast. I believe the podcast has been finished, and Patreon donors and sponsors supporters, and I believe Twitch subscribers too, will all get access to the super secret link that is the podcast, which will hopefully be dropping later today or sometime this week, early on Monday or something. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I love you all. Have a great week. I'll see you in the videos. Bye. It's in their paperwork. The vet has it too. No. <laughs> no, we're not taking any chances like that anymore. Not with her.